I'm standing in front of Stuart Jones Designs in uh, Joseph, Oregon on June 12, 2012. And um, I was looking for some, con some contemporary art. And it's a little hard to find in these parts. But uh, they sent me down here. And uh, wolves, God help us. And I walked into this place, and first of all, you'll notice the lighting uh, and the openness of this space, and these uh, little pieces here are about as close as it comes. But I got started into the jewelry, and this... If you go on our website, there's lots of photos, too. Their website has more photos. And um, as I went along, Miss... Uh, I'm sorry, the woman from New York. And this is Mr. Stuart Jones. And he's about to show me uh, device that he has that engraves silver in an incredible way. It's a hand-operated um, machine, and I'll show you some examples later of the work, but right now we're going to look at first the, uh, the, the machine, and it has a series of cams on it that enable him to create concentric lines and designs um, like you see here of unbelievable detail and fineness. And Mr. Jones, um, you said you've had this about three years? Yeah, about three and a half years. And it's hand operated, right? Yeah, hand crank. Hand crank. It is the short definition is it's an antique Swiss rose engine, and what that translates out to is that it's an ornamental lathe. So it's a lathe, in other words, it rotates and it does ornaments, purposes for ornamentation rather than for machining precision parts, but it does precision ornamentation. Its initial dedication, when it was built 152 years ago, was for clock faces, for wall clocks or mantel clocks. It has a diameter capacity of about 11 inches, so it can do a circle up to 11 inches in diameter. I'm doing it mostly on small pieces. I think I go up to, from the chucks that I have, I go up to about a three inch diameter at this point. But I'd like to do some larger pieces over time. Uh, can you point to that there for me? You said the cutting face is that, yeah. and that's the actual work that you're this working? This is the cutting face right here, and that's a disc that I have, in fact, just cut and I'm done with it so I'll take it off and there let you see what the surface is that I've done. The cutting is all done flat and then the pieces are domed or otherwise manipulated after they've been engraved. So and do you buy the discs? I buy the discs pre-made. Um, I've made a couple of, I, I needed a disc that was about as uh, big and thick as a silver dollar. And it was easier for me to make that than to order it. Oh. So I just made that one myself. I've got a disc cutter. I can cast ingots and roll them out on the rolling mill and make my own stock. Wow. But for the thin pieces like this, for what these cost me in their labor, it's way worth it to have them make them for me than to have me make them for myself. Mm -hmm. So it cost me a few pennies per disc over the cost of the metal. Wow. So that's great. This one's so where are these silver. from? Where are you getting these? I get these from Hoover and Strong in Richmond, Virginia. Are and they made there, do you know? Yeah, they, they're a complete manufacturing plant and they utilize only and solely recycled precious metals. Huh. They don't utilize metals from any mining operations at all. Interesting. Um, so yeah, one huh. of the things I like about them and then they do some they do supply stones and all of their stones are certified conflict free 
That's another reason why I, what, I like. What do you mean by conflict free? Is that well, diamonds in particular aren't coming from areas of the world where they are smuggled and used to um, pay for wars, pay for armaments. In other mm, words, these, okay. these are stones. Okay, I think um, literally conflict then. Literally, con yeah, yeah, yeah okay. they, they're stones that come from areas and are certified through various fairly rigorous processes as having come from places where people are earning a fair wage and you know digging of their own free will rather than with a gun at their head. Okay. Um, and they're not and then the money made from the stones is not being used to finance aggression or other war like activities. So that's you know one of the things you can do when you're in a a business that um, you know, has some onus to it potentially. You know, I like to try and get suppliers that are more in line with what I'd like uh -huh. than feel like you're stuck with buying things that are doing bad where they come from and you're trying to do good with them here. I like to make them do good all the way along the track. You know, and you know, it's as much as I can help. I mean, right. once I get outside of Wallowa County, I can't personally certify things, but the companies. <laughs> <laughs> that I deal with every I for a little long time. bit. I mean, it, 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 you, know, you, you try know, yeah, as you well as you know. I mean, it just yeah. So this is a finished disc. I'm going to cut that center area out, and so it'll be a hole, it'll be a basically a donut, uh -huh. and then this will be enameled. Okay. And then a stone of an appropriate color will be set in the center, uh -huh. and then this will become a pendant. It'll be uh -huh. have a bail on it. And, I've got a lot of work to do on that still. How long have you been working on this? I mean, how long has it taken you to cut? To cut this one? Yeah, disc? just do um, what you have on there. Start to finish on this so far has been about a half an hour. Uh huh. So well, that's not, not bad. Well, not bad. What I've got left is probably another eight hours, what I've got left to do. Because once it's been cut, you have to handle it fairly carefully because you can mar the surface fairly readily if you're not careful about how you handle it. So the handling of it after the fact becomes a primary issue. And what will you cut the center out with? Well, I'll drill a hole. I'll take a four-aught saw blade. I'll cut out and I'll just very carefully cut it out by hand. And then once I've cut it out by hand, I go in there with a ball burr, which is a very circular burr, and I will very carefully dap it so that I get the circularity absolutely aligned. And I, I do that all just by vision, you know, just wow. using visual acuity. But I'll get it down to right where I want it. And then actually when I do that, I actually do that from the back so that I create a little bit of a flange. And then I take a burnisher and I burnish that flange so that there's a little tiny bit of a lip that sticks up on this side. Uh -huh. And that acts as a fence for the enameling that I put on. Interesting. And oh. I've got a couple of pieces upstairs I'll show you. And okay, yeah. I'll go up there for part of the tour. Um, so how did you find out about this this about piece this of equipment? The, what did you call it? A rose machine? A rose engine, a Swiss a rose, rose engine. And that basically uh, is a description that grew out of the somewhat floral rose pattern that the designs can interpret. You know, that this particular pattern has a very rose-like mm -hmm. look to it. And that's what it's, how it's defined. 